Imagine this. You're working late. Everything seems normal. But suddenly, your internet becomes painfully slow. Your team starts pinging you. Hey, is the network down? You open Wireshark. A few seconds in, you spot it. Massive traffic spikes from a device you don't even recognize. It's using a strange port, sending out packets like crazy. In that moment, Wireshark isn't just a tool. It's your eyes inside the network, revealing what's really happening behind the scenes. In this video, we're going to explore Wireshark. We'll talk about what it's used for, go over some common use cases, and take a quick look at the interface and the data it displays. So remember to like and subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this. Wireshark is one of the most powerful traffic analyzer tools out there. It's used in real-world environments, from data centers to small businesses, by network engineers, cybersecurity experts, and even students trying to understand what's flowing through a network. You can use it to detect and troubleshoot problems like heavy traffic, dropped connections, or congestion. Spot security threats, like unknown hosts, abnormal port activity, or suspicious traffic. Learn how network protocols really work, including response codes, handshakes, and even payload data. But here's an important note. Wireshark is not an intrusion detection system. It doesn't alert you, it doesn't block anything or change packets, it simply captures and shows what's happening. The rest is up to your skill and investigation. After opening Wireshark, you'll see a clean all-in-one interface that helps you investigate network traffic in multiple ways. Let's walk through each part of the screen one by one. This is called the toolbar. It's your main control center. From here, you can start or stop packet captures, apply filters, export your capture files, or even merge multiple captures. Everything you need to manage and process traffic is here. This is called the display filter bar. It's where you enter your filtering queries. For example, you can type something like ip.addr equal equal 192.168.1.1 to focus only on traffic from or to that IP address. This is one of the most important sections for investigation. This section is called the Recent Files panel. It shows the list of your recently opened capture files. If you've worked on something before, you can just double-click one of the listed files and continue where you left off. This is called the Capture Filter and Interfaces section. Here you can select which network interface you want to sniff traffic from, like ETH0, WLAN0, or LO. You can also set a capture filter before starting your recording. This helps you capture only the traffic you care about, such as DNS or HTTP. This is called the status bar. It sits at the bottom of the screen and gives you real-time information like the number of packets captured, your current capture profile, and the overall state of the tool. Once you're familiar with these sections, it becomes easier to start using Wireshark like a pro. So now, let's move on to real traffic analysis and see how to use these features in a live environment. Let's see how we can load a PCAP files. When you first open Wireshark, the interface looks empty. You'll only see a list of recently opened files. In this case, we see one, a file called http1.cap. To load it, just double-click the file name. Wireshark will open it and display all the captured packets inside. There are also other ways to open a capture file. You can go to the file menu at the top and choose open, or simply drag and drop the file into the Wireshark window, or just double click the .pcap or .cap file directly from your system. Once the file is loaded, you'll see Wireshark's detailed packet view, which we'll explore next. All right, let's have a look inside Wireshark now. Once the pcap file is loaded, you'll see the file name at the top, and right below that, there's a count showing how many packets are inside. But more importantly, Wireshark breaks everything into three main sections to help us read and understand the packet data clearly. At the top section, there's a list showing each packet one by one. It tells us where the packet is coming from, where it's going, what protocol it's using, like TCP or DNS, and gives a short summary. This section is where you can scroll through all the traffic and pick any packet you want to look deeper into. Now, when you click on one of those packets, the middle section lights up with more technical info. This part breaks the packet down into all of its protocol layers, like Ethernet, IP, TCP, and so on. You can click the arrows to open up each layer and see exactly what's going on inside that packet. Then, down at the bottom, there's a section showing the raw data. On the left, it's in hexadecimal, and on the right, you'll see the decoded ASCI version. As you click around in the middle section, Wireshark will highlight the exact bytes connected to what you're looking at, which makes it easier to understand the structure. So yeah, these three sections work together, the top helps you choose, the middle breaks it down, and the bottom shows the raw data. I'll walk you through each of these while we look at some real examples next. Let's take a quick look at how Wireshark colors packets, because this is actually more useful than it might look at first. 
When you're looking at packet captures, you might notice that a lot of them are green, or maybe you'll see different colors popping up. This isn't random. Wireshark colors packets based on certain conditions and the protocol being used. The whole idea is to help you quickly spot patterns, anomalies, or specific protocols in your capture. These colors make it easy to spot exactly what you're looking for during analysis. You can even create your own custom color rules. There are two types. Permanent rules, saved in your profile, available every time you open Wireshark. Temporary rules, only for your current session. Let's make a new permanent rule to highlight HTTP traffic in bright yellow. First, go to the View menu at the top, then select Coloring Rules from the drop-down. In the Coloring Rules window, click Add. Name the new rule something like Bright Yellow HTTP. In the Filter field, type HTTP, set the foreground color to yellow and the background color to black. Click OK. Now the HTTP packets have yellow text on a black background as we set in the rule. This rule will be saved to your profile and appear every time you open Wireshark. Now let's look at temporary rules. These only last while Wireshark is open. Right click on any packet. Choose Colorize Conversation and then TCP. All packets in that TCP stream change color temporarily. Notice this rule is not listed in the coloring rules window. This temporary rule is great for quick analysis, but it disappears when you close Wireshark.